Hello and welcome to this e-learning training course. This course has been designed to provide you with an overview of ITIL-based IT service management. This course is based on ITIL good practices as described in the ITIL service management publications. The course highlights how plans, processes, functions, roles, responsibilities and knowledge management all work together to help organizations to plan, to design, transition, operate and improve the IT services that will deliver agreed benefits. In addition, the course provides the ideal background knowledge for anyone intending to operate in an ITIL-based service management environment. In this introductory session, we'll begin by outlining the objectives of this course. These are to provide an awareness of ITIL best practice, its key concepts and associated terminology. To define what a service is and take a look at the service lifecycle. To outline the five core books within the IT infrastructure library and look at how some of the concepts can be implemented. In this overview session, we will outline the course objectives, examine the history of ITIL, define what is meant by good practice, See how ITIL integrates with other good practice standards, frameworks and methods. Describe the five service lifecycle stages and define a service, a function, a process and roles in ITIL terms. Throughout this course, you'll find direct quotes from relevant ITIL guidance. These quotes are intended to highlight important statements. Any on-screen quotes are indicated by inverted commas. Quotes included in the course subtitles are highlighted in the same way. The IT infrastructure sits at the heart of most organizations. Consequently, and more importantly, the organization relies on IT to support almost all of its day-to-day -day business operations. ITIL guidance recognizes this dependency and suggests that IT should be delivered to the organization in the form of services. To ensure that the services meet the present and future business needs, the service must be properly managed, continuously reviewed, and, if justified, updated. ITIL uses words and phrases which may have different meanings from those used in your organization, so an additional objective of this course is to introduce you to some of these words and phrases. In fact, we'll be introducing quite a few in this introductory session. For complete definitions, we suggest that you take a look at the glossary of terms, definitions and acronyms provided in the course. ITIL defines service management as a set of specialized organizational capabilities, providing value to customers in the form of services. There are four key words here, namely organization, capability, value and customers. For example, a customer is most likely to be a budget holder and a decision maker. The customer agrees requirements and changes to a service. Customers may act as the service owner or service sponsor. A customer is most likely to be a senior staff member in your organization, for example, a sales manager or an HR director. Customers are stakeholders. Value simply means that you get something that is very useful to you. For example, if you are hungry, you may decide to buy a pizza. The pizza supplier provides a service that bakes and delivers the pizza. You may consider it a good value service if the pizza stops you feeling hungry and the pizza is delivered within 20 minutes. The capability needed to provide the service may be provided by people with the skills required to manage and carry out the order, baking, delivery and payment processes. We'll return to some of these concepts later on in the course. Before we go any further, let's take a brief look at the history of ITIL. The need for reliable IT services in UK government departments triggered the CCTA, now known as the OGC, to sponsor the ITIL development project. The outcome was the IT Infrastructure Library. The first library included 34 books, which were published between 1992 and 1998. The books contained comprehensive guidance on how ITIL concepts, processes and products could help organizations to manage their IT services and the supporting 
IT infrastructure. By the late 1990s, many large organizations and government agencies throughout the world used ITIL good practice guidelines for IT service management. ITIL V2 was published in 2000 and became the world's leading service management reference source. There is now a global community of users sharing the principles and concepts embedded in the framework. This concludes this session entitled Overview of ITIL and Service Management. In this session we have examined the history of ITIL to find what is meant by good practice. We've also seen how ITIL integrates with other good practice methods and processes. And finally, we've described a service, a function, a process and a role in ITIL terms.